Welcome to the Yes to Life show, where we discuss everything related to vegan fitness, vegan fitness tip, nutrition tips. And today we have a very special guest. He's actually been on the show before, Geoff Palmer. He's the CEO and the founder of Clean Machine, an amazing vegan supplement company. And today we'll share all about his journey, uh, his tips that he gathered from over 34 years of being vegan and being pretty, pretty muscular. Um, we will show some images later so you know exactly what I'm talking about. He has a lot of knowledge, he has a lot of tips. And without further ado, let's jump right into the interview. Thank you so much, Joe, for taking the time again for the interview. Oh, pleasure to be back. Always good to talk with you. And yeah, I gave the people a, a little bit of an overview in the beginning, but if you want, it would be great if you could share your story. What made you, be, because you've been vegan since 34 years, so what made you decide to become vegan back then? Yeah, um, I know there are really kind of two ways of, uh, of uh, two major ways of getting to um, the understanding of what veganism is about. Uh, and one is through uh, external information. Um, and the other, the way I came to it was through an internal experience. Um, fortunately, today, there's uh, plenty of movies, there's social media, there's uh, books out, uh, there's research groups, there's all kinds of support for for veganism today. But um, almost 35 years ago, when I became vegan, I didn't even know the word vegan. Uh, I didn't even know there was a thing. Um, I came to it through my own personal um, transformation. Uh, I was suffering with uh, severe depression and uh, was suicidal and before I was ready to take my life because I was just not really feeling happy with the world um, that uh, a friend introduced me to another friend who helped me through my pain and once I broke through that I felt such an overwhelming sense of gratitude uh, from the relief of all the suffering that I was going through chronic suffering for years, most of my early adulthood. Um, and when I broke through, I just said, oh my God, how, how can I give this gift back to others? How can I contribute to less suffering in the world? I was so flying high from that experience of being released from that emotional, psychological, and even physical pain that you know, I just sat up all night long. I couldn't sleep. I, my whole body was buzzing. And I, I asked myself, you know, how can I contribute to less suffering in the world? And I meditated on that all night long. And as the sun rose, I felt it rise inside myself. Just stop harming the animals. And so I quit smoking. I quit drinking. I quit doing all drugs. And I quit eating all animal products that day, um, third, almost 35 years ago. And not only did I commit to my own personal transformation, I wanted to continue to try to give that back to others. So I committed the rest of my life to trying to promote uh, a plant-based diet and veganism as a whole. Now, the Diet is, is definitely different than, than veganism. Veganism is an approach that is, is based on not harming animals. Um, uh, but the diet definitely can be an impactful place for people to start. If they make those changes and feel those changes, then they must come to at some point in their life, well, why was I contributing to all that animal suffering? Why was I contributing to all that environmental degradation? when this food is actually better, healthier for me, more nutritious for my body. So, you know, then I started getting challenged by people by saying, hey, you know, you're vegan, but why? And where do you get your protein? And all the common questions you get today, imagine that 35 years yeah. ago. <laughs> um, so I set, I set out to do the research. I said, I've got to find the plants out there in the plant kingdom that answer these questions and and so i committed to research i was a researcher in college and biopsych major in college and i loved reading studies back then for for my university studies but i said oh, but this is all research on drugs and research on you know what about food what about the plants that's where all the good stuff is coming from and, and uh, after years of um, almost, you know, 30 years of working in the nutritional supplements and, and, and whole food nutrition space, 
I said, look, a lot of these companies are doing it wrong. They're really not focusing on the right things. They're not taking some of these amazing plants and bringing them to market because they're marketing-based companies. And, you know, after I signed over another patent and made a company $40 million, I, my wife turned to me and said, why do you keep making these companies wealthy off of your ideas when you don't even like what they're doing? Why not do our own thing? And that's the birth of Clean Machine. So that's, awesome. that's how it all began. <laughs> <laughs> Very inspiring story. Um, just to backtrack a little bit, 34 years ago when you became vegan, were you already training or did you just slowly get into training once you became vegan? Yeah, I was actually training and got into nutrition um, in high school. I was on the high school swim team. Mm -hmm. uh, I had set records, so I was doing well. Um, and then when I got into college, I found out how much more important nutrition is um, and considered and continued working out from pretty much my uh, early uh, 20s uh, till today. Uh, but I didn't actually step on stage and compete until I turned 50. Um, so I competed in my first bodybuilding uh, championship and and took first place in masters bodybuilding over 50. So. I got the bug and went on and competed. And um, in my first physique contest, I also won uh, first place. And I'm going up against other athletes who are clearly not vegan. Um, and I did it all natural, drug free. Um, so I really want to be a living example for what you can accomplish at any age, completely natural, without drugs, and without harming any animals, without consuming any animal products at all that's my gift back and that's my hope to inspire others to make a positive change in their lives so that's that's my been my focus with clean machine and why we developed uh the very first completely natural vegan bodybuilding championship in the world in 2018 and we're doing the second one at the end of this year in 2020. Oh, that's awesome and that's why also you have uh, you have a lot of uh um, in the vegan scene, pretty famous uh, vegan bodybuilders like Corin Sutton and then the other is Monk, right? And Forrest Nash and, and the guy from Hong Kong. Um, yes, so you, you, have a, you have a very interesting team as well. And, uh, yeah. Yes, Hin Chen Chui is one of the most decorated um, uh, natural vegan athletes ever. Um, wow. He won more competitions and placed more than, than any other natural vegan bodybuilder in the world. So yes, yeah, very honored to have Corinne's been a close friend and probably the, the one of the biggest natural vegan bodybuilders in the world um, as far as size and, and the weight he carries. And he's a three time pro. So uh, extraordinary coach, just an, he's a gift to have on the team. All of our teammates are just a wonderful to be with. And, and we want to do more. We want to uh, sponsor more um, natural vegan athletes um, to continue to try to inspire people to, to change. That's awesome. And then, then when you're, you're focusing on athletes, is it, is it always from bodybuilding or do you also have athletes like in endurance sports or doing Olympics or something like this? We do have uh, affiliates, um, not, not necessarily ambassadors, but affiliates mm -hmm. um, that uh, are in other sports, you know, from, from volleyball to, to um, endurance sports, cycling and things like that. And yes, we would like to represent more, um, you know, that's just uh, been where we're at. You know, we have a movie out right now called Game Changers, which is a phenomenal film if you haven't seen it, mm -hmm. um, showing some of the top athletes performing at their best on a completely plant-based diet. Um, so, you know, we want to try to carry that forward in showing people what can be accomplished in, in the top levels of um, sports performance with the proper nutrition. You can't just be a vegan junk food person and expect to get amazing results like that. That's not how it works. <laughs> and that's, that's part of why I created the brand, to try to bring some of these plants that no one else would bring to market that offer um, truly elite level nutrition um, so that people can get results in the gym they, sooner and quicker and in a much healthier way than most of the other products in the market. Awesome. Yeah, because from what I understand, you don't simply just have like something like a soy protein 
uh, flavored like cookies and cream, uh, uh, sugar overshot. But your protein and your all of your all of your products and ingredients are very different. So, what makes the clean machine so special? Yeah, so you know, I I worked in the industry because I needed, like most people, I needed a paycheck to pay the bills. Um, but what I saw was is a bit disheartening. I worked for some of the top sports nutrition companies and other uh, natural product companies, and I saw a lot of practices that I just thought were not helpful and were ignoring some of the plants that could be should have been brought to market but weren't. And the reason being is a simple model is most businesses are out there have a nearly single-minded goal of profits. Hmm. And in order to be profitable, their model was make the product as cheaply as possible with the cheapest ingredients so you make the most margin. And then with that margin, you can spend a lot of money on advertising to try to convince people that you should be buying their product with endorsements from people like celebrities. What I did is just the opposite, which is I took the ingredients that nobody else would play for because they're too expensive. They're, they're too hard to educate the consumer on. They didn't want to spend a whole lot of marketing dollars trying to educate the consumer on why their product was better. They just wanted to taste good, right? That's all you want. If it tastes good, people will buy it again. And that's what they're after, just sales. What I'm building is products that are the best for nutrition, for overall health, for performance of these plants that no one else will touch because they're too expensive. It doesn't fit their profit model. But I don't care about profits. I want to do something different. I believe you can build a business giving the best products to the people and that will get them to come back. Not just make it taste good or be so loaded with stimulants that that freaks their brain out. No, I want products that actually deliver results. And that's what's going to get people to come back. It's going to be slower. It's going to take longer. We don't have the money because we're not as profitable to spend on a huge marketing campaigns. We're not a marketing company. We're a product-based company. We put our money into the ingredients so that you can get a better product rather than putting it into marketing and putting it into a big profit margins for the company. It's a totally different approach. It takes a lot longer. You know, people say, oh, you must be in this to make money. I'm like, God, if, if that was my motive, I'd be doing something else, trust me. <laughs> That's true, I can imagine. Uh, especially what you said that some of the ingredients that you're using, that it can be tough to convince the consumer. Because for example, I had to think of you so many times in the past weeks, because all over Facebook and the different Facebook groups, I always saw people sharing articles about duckweed and AI flour. Mm -hmm. um, because some of your ingredients, you're, you're really based on lentine or duckweed. Yes. And yes. I can imagine, because as a consumer also, by my, uh, when, before I went vegan, the only thing I had in mind when it came to protein was whey protein, maybe soy protein, but then something like duckweed is very, very out of the ordinary. So mm -hmm. to convince someone that uh, duckweed, uh, I think lentine sounds a lot better. That's probably why you changed the name, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, duckweed can be that good, I guess. <laughs> duckweed is the colloquial name for it because uh, obviously ducks ate it. Uh, mm -hmm. Seems like the ducks were smarter than human beings for a lot longer. <laughs> um, yeah, duckweed or, or lentine. Lentine gets its name from being called water lentils. They're also mm -hmm. called water lentils now. Don't get confused as nothing to do with the common lentils that you eat, uh, in, in, that you buy in the store. This is a completely different plant. Um, it, they call it that because they look like a green lentil if you floated them on the water, but they're more closely related to like a micro lily pad. Um, but they, it is the most nutrient dense plant in the world. It's the highest in branch chains. It's the highest in essential amino acids of any known plant, higher than pea, rice, hemp, soy, more nutrient dense than spirulina, chlorella, spinach, kale, even moringa. So it's definitely the number one superfood in the world. But you know, trying to educate people out there that it's the most eco-friendly product out there, a near zero carbon footprint, uh, grows every you know 30 uh, every couple of days. It grows to full size. It can be harvested 365 days won the Eco Excellence Award, you know, it's the highest in nutrients, highest in protein, number one superfood. And when you make all these claims, it sounds like, oh, too good to be true, right? So, you know, that's a, that's a hurdle. And then, you know, people say, oh, well, if it's that good, how come I've never heard of it? Yeah. <laughs> that's a valid question. Yeah. Um, and, and the truth is, 
it, it was considered a weed. Uh, we've been trying to kill the damn thing for, for the last 50 years until somebody figured out how nutrient dense it was and said, oh my God, we shouldn't be killing this thing. We should be harvesting it and feeding it to people. So yes, and speaking of discoveries like that, it wasn't actually until just several weeks ago that it was discovered to contain naturally occurring B12. Now that's a huge breakthrough and it's really exciting for me as a long-term vegan because nutritionally, you know, I think most people are getting that all plants have protein and that actually plants are the one that make all the essential amino acids. Animals can't do that. So all protein originates in plants anyway. Why are we feeding the plants, you know, the plant nutrients to the animal, killing the animal and then stealing the plant nutrients from the dead animal? Hmm. That just doesn't make any sense. Just leave the middle person out of it. But, or middle animal, I should say. Um, but, you know, I think we've gotten past a little bit, at least, on the protein, although there still needs to do a lot of education on that because there are still people that believe the protein myth that, Pro, uh, protein comes from animals and it does not. Um, uh, you know, but the big question was the last really thing that people were saying, aha, you can't get, you can't get uh, B12 from plants, but you can get them from animals. And once again, the truth is no, B12 doesn't come from animals either. Um, B12 comes from bacteria. Hmm. Now, what we're saying that you can get this from a plant. How's that possible if it comes from bacteria? Bacteria found in the soil, right? Well, this is a water plant. And this is where the story gets interesting. And because the plant is not in the soil, normally a plant would have a symbiotic relationship with the soil and the soil organisms. So the plant actually produces amino acids and sugars and sends them down to the roots and pushes it into the soil to attract bacteria. So the bacteria eat the nice gifts from the uh, plant, which is sugars and amino acids that they need. And in return, the bacteria then and the fungus help break down and, and supply nutrients to the plant. Great, great little story. Symbiosis is awesome when the plant is feeding the bacteria and the bacteria feed the plant. It's a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, in modern farming practices, we've wiped out all the bacteria in the soil and what we have is dead soil and the plant don't get those extra nutrients that they could get. Now, when you have the plant in a water source though, it's not sitting in soil. So how does it get those bacteria that it needs? Well, this plant is adapted at pulling the bacteria up into the plant itself. And the actual bacteria live inside the plant. And that's a really cool relationship because now the plant can move around the water and not have to worry about seeking out bacteria. The bacteria are living right inside them. We use the whole plant in the process of lentine. So we take the whole plant out of the water, cold press it, and then you have all that B12 still in the plant. So this is truly the first really known uh, protein source that is in its whole food plant state with bioactive B12. This is not the pseudo B12, the analogs of B12 that you find in, 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 in ocean life, like nori or, or seaweeds or plants like that. This is actually true bioactive forms, the hydroxy, the adenosyl, and the methylcobalamin forms of B12. So just phenomenal discovery. And it shows that this may be the tip of the iceberg. This may show us that we could get all of our B12 from plants potentially as well, if we use proper farming techniques. So we can encourage the plants to grow healthier, stronger, and bigger by having these bacteria in the soil. And if we can learn to change our farming practices back to that of which we would find in nature, we can find ourselves probably getting the B12 we needed from the plants themselves. But until then, we have our first example and a sure way to get B12 in its whole food plant state in bioactive forms. It's a pretty exciting breakthrough and it's a huge step forward for the plant-based movement because it removes that final argument against a uh, plant-based diet. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's really a game changer because every other day in Facebook and everyone always asks, where do they get the B12 from? Do they mm -hmm. have to the supplement? But then when you say that you have a plant, like in this case, duckweed or lentine, 
that actually provides you with all of the B12 in its natural state. Um, and you get the best uh, protein and you get all of the other ingredients. That's, uh, it really sounds too good to be true almost. <laughs> It does. And, and that's been a challenge for us. You know, a lot of people don't believe it. A lot of people challenge us. But I think over time, the information will get out there. The information will become more accepted. And, uh, and I think people who are really seeking good whole food plant based nutrition that feeds the body, that feeds the whole body, you know, this plant has provides just one scoop, provides you with over 50% of your omega 3s, 32% of your fiber. Um, and that fiber is 50% of that fiber is in its prebiotic state. So you're actually feeding your gut microbiome. You're getting your B12. I mean, it is the most nutritionally complete plant food that we know of. And no one would bring it to market. One, it's green. So a lot of people are used to eating, you know, drinking protein shakes that are just isolated protein. So you're stripped of all your nutrition, stripped of all your fiber, stripped of all your omega-3s. It's just protein. And then they add a bunch of chocolate flavor and sweeteners to it. Okay, if you want a chocolate candy bar, just go buy a candy bar. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for real nutrition, this is the whole food plant in its natural green state. We use the whole plant, the root, the flower, the stem, uh, the leaves, everything goes right into the protein. So you're getting true whole food nutrition. It's just a phenomenal. It's almost 60% of your iron. Uh, over 200% of your vitamin A is beta carotene. Uh, over 1,500% of your vitamin K. I mean, you know, people talk about, oh, vegans don't get enough vitamin K. Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're getting nine to 10 times the wheat that we say that we need. Um, it's lutein, chlorophyll, polyphenols, antioxidants. This thing is just freaking loaded. It's the super plant of the world, really. That's that's amazing. That's also also like last time when you spoke about it in our last interview. Uh, the only thought in my mind is like, when do you finally sell it in Europe? Because I really would like to get an answer. <laughs> yes. We are working on that. We're going through uh, regulatory now. So we're nice. opening up India soon and uh, Mexico and then uh, UK and Europe. So maybe nice, nice. towards the end of the year, uh, we'll hopefully be able to bring it to, um, to the UK. Uh, the UK and, and uh, the EFSA, which controls like the FDA in Europe, um, are still waiting on final approvals. Um, even though it's approved for consumption here in the United States and it's eaten by cultures all around the world, um, they're still, I guess, a little reluctant to, to, to get approval. But it's only a matter of time that they will. And once they do, we'll get it available there too as well. Yeah, the European Union can be a little bit tricky when it comes to this. They, they always have, uh, when there's certain things that have not been considered um, traditional food here in Europe and they're sort of new even though it's been all around Germany and Netherlands for ages then they can be very very uh, tough about that um, but then let's come back to the research because I think also one thing that I saw the other day from you was you also have this plant you're using this plant called AI flower not sure if I'm pronouncing correctly um, and apparently that's what that's what the research said as far as I understand it has more omega-3s than algae oil, for example. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit about that? What, what's AI flower and uh, where does it grow? Um, and also then about the research. Yes, yeah, so some fascinating research. Um, uh, some of it I can share with you and some of it we're working on. Um, we're working with a doctor on a white paper on research that is really going to dramatically change how we what we thought about omega-3 metabolism. Um, so ahi flower, it's called ahi flower, like the yeah. ahi fish. Um, uh, so ahi flower it grows only in the UK, which is interesting. Uh, it's cold pressed uh, oil. And um, it is. Uh, it was interesting because it is the richest source of steridonic acid. So steridonic acid, is one of the omega-3 metabolites. There are actually six omega-3s, um, um, six, six omega-3s. There's ALA, SDA, ETA, and then EPA, DPA, and DHA. So there's actually six omega-3s, and for whatever reason, science has only really been focused on EPA and DHA which is, is, is going to turn out to be probably somewhat of 
a big miss on the nutritional end of things. Um, we now know that um, a recent study came out showing that ALA, SDA, and ETA, the first three metabolites, are actually affected and increased uh, fluid intelligence. It's our body's ability to process an, um, uh, information. Only with those three metabolites. That means EPA and THA had no effect. So everybody's out there is taking EPA and DHA supplements and totally missing out on three omega-3s that they're absolutely not getting. Now, there is a conversion rate. So um, the conversion goes from ALA to SDA, then to ETA, then EPA, and then DPA, then DHA. So it's a, it's a what, but what's fascinating is new research has shown that that conversion rate is unidirectional. It means it only goes from ALA down to DHA. Once it's DHA, it doesn't back convert to any of the omega-3s. So if you're taking DHA, that's all you're gonna get out of it. Now, if you take ALA, it can convert to any of the other omega-3s, all five of the other omega-3s that our body needs for total optimal health. Now, ALA is found only in plants. EPA and DHA, much further down the chain, are found in animals and algae. So if you're taking EPA and DHA, you're missing out on the top three that have shown to improve intelligence. That means the human body actually needs those forms of omega-3, that we are biologically engineered, or we are genetically made to consume those upper three omega-3s that are needed for our overall optimal health, and you cannot get them from animals or algae. So fish oil and algae oil cannot supply those. Now, the top two metabolites is what we should be focusing on, and that's ALA and SDA. Now, here's the interesting thing. What is the richest source of ALA and SDA combined in the world? Ahi flower, and it's not even close. Ahi flower is the richest source of SDA of any plant on the planet. And when you combine the ALA and SDA together, it is the richest source of those two omega-3s. Those two can convert to all of the rest of omega-3s. Now, that's how it's working. And, and this is really going to change what we thought we knew about omega-3 metabolism. So these are powerful new studies that show Ahi flower to be the best source of omega-3s and allowing our body to transform them or convert them into the proper omega-3s that our human body needs, instead of just giving it to way down the chain that it may or may not need. So this is going to be revolutionary shift in all of our understanding about omega-3. And I'm looking forward to spreading this story more in, in a bigger way and the research once the white paper comes out. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, only know interesting enough, like you mentioned, that uh, I only ever heard about ALA, DHA, EPA. And the only thing I know is that, for example, flax seeds, I think, are very rich in ALA. But then the other three, I never heard about them. Right. And, and, and just to, to do a comparison. So because uh, ahi flour is so rich in SDA, um, SDA has a higher conversion rate. So they went head to head and they looked at uh, flax compared. Flax is the, the most consumed uh, plant-based omega-3 in the world. Um, so they, they compared it and they said how much uh, is being converted to EPA. So the studies found even inside the cells, intracellular conversion rate of ALA to, um, to EPA, and then they compared that to ahi flour. Ahi flour was 400% more effective at converting to EPA than flax oil. Oh, wow. it, beat, it beat chia, it beat hemp, it beat all other plant sources of omega-3s. So four times more effective than the number one selling. You know, I went to one of the top retailers here in the United States and I said, you know, here's, here's published human clinical proof that this is four times more effective than the flax oil you have on your shelf. And he said, yeah, that's the problem. And I said, what do you mean? I said, this is four times better than anything you're selling to your consumers. And he goes, I know, 
if we put that on the shelf, what am I going to do with all the 40 other SKUs of plant-based uh, omega-3s that I have? They're not going to sell if they know if people know what you have. And I'm like, you're going to not sell something that is four times better for your consumers? <laughs> I was dumbfounded. But that's that's monetary. And that's why I have to go out and make these talks. And thank you for allowing me to talk on this because I need to get this information out directly to the consumer because the retailers don't want to do it because they're all about the money and the sales. They've already invested lots of money on the product that's sitting on their shelf. If, I, if I'm telling you that our product is four times better than theirs, you're not going to buy their product and then they won't sell it and they're stuck with inventory. It's all about the dollars to them. So I need to speak directly to the consumer and help educate you. I'm not about sales. You know, sales will come if, 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 if I'm doing the right thing. I'm about the research. I'm about the plants. I'm about what is the best for my body. These are the products that I make for myself, you know. And, but I'm being blockaded by the retailers and the big players out in the marketplace because they can outspend me in dollars. And, and everything like this. But I believe in these plants. These plants are miraculous and I want to get them out to people who want them. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to having them in Europe at some point. Yes, ahi flower is already approved in Europe. Um, so we're working on a distributor to try to get uh, the product for sale out there. Nice, nice. So we can buy it in Germany. Hey. Hopefully. Uh, no, that's very, very interesting uh, because, yeah, like the last three, three to four weeks, I saw so many of these posts and that really reminded you every time I had to think of you, Jeff, and then I was like, yeah, let's do another interview. That could be really interesting what's going on um, right now with a clean machine. I think the, I could imagine that the combination of the Game Changers movie and then all of the research that's coming out has had a pretty positive impact on your company also. Yeah, we're, I mean, our sales are up over 1300% since the announcement of the, the P12. Nice. But, you know, and, and this is, this is what I want. I think knowledge is power. Hmm. I think, you know, if you can provide the research and the information that people can make better choices for their own health, that's very empowering. I want to empower people. I'm not out to try to get you to buy a product. I want to educate you on these plants. And if this is a plant that seems interesting to you, if this is a plant that resonates with you because of its high nutritional qualities, well, well then I want to make that available to you because most people have never even heard of ahi flower, never heard of lentine, and would never be exposed to it if they didn't have companies like me who believed in the plants and would you know, get past the, the lower profit margins in order to bring these products to market. That's awesome. That's no, really, uh, I mean, also, you could also just sell different, uh, that's why it also shows that you're not after the profit because you always have, you already have almost everything in just one product in the, in the protein. So you could divide it, you could have the vitamin D, you could have the, uh, the B12, the omega 3s, all different products, but it's basically just uh, one plant with the duckweed. Um, so that's just, uh, very, very exciting. Um, and, Yeah, I, I also, I read, I read some of the research papers also. That's just a, a very interesting topic. Um, it made me actually think, uh, I don't know if you know these seaweed crackers that people always eat all over Asia, and they also have them here in Europe. It would be mm -hmm. awesome if there would be a way to make them from duckweed. <laughs> That'd be really cool. That is a cool. I, I, we've, uh, the, 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 the growers of Lentine have actually made crackers out of it. So I think you'll begin to see uh, Lentine in, um, in, in its duckweed, the water lentils, being used in a lot more ways. Especially, you know, it, it's funny, you know, it, it's, it's one of the best kept secrets, but then as it grows as in popularity, obviously there's going to be a lot more other people selling the product once it's, it's known. Um, but, you know, that's, that's part of growth. That's what I really want. My message is to try to bring the nutrition of the plant, plant kingdom um, and make it available to people so that they can have access to some of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. Um, the best in the plant-based kingdom, you know? And then as we grow, I'll continue to find more cool plants. 
Uh, I was the first to bring ahi flour to market. I was the first to bring lentine to market. I was the first to bring uh, DM33, which is this cactus flower in sublock 80. Um, it's it's, it's mind-blowing how much more effective it is than any other um, supplement in its category for hormone optimization. Um, this cactus flower is incredible. I, I would never, I would never produce a product um, that just boosted testosterone because I don't believe in that. Um, yes, testosterone is required and you should have healthy levels, but elevating testosterone too much can lead to a whole host of nasty side effects. Um, bad skin, acne, um, um, you know, prostate issues, hair loss, um, breast growth in men. I mean, these are really nasty, horrible side effects and some even life-threatening. So I would never touch this category until I found this cactus flower. This cactus flower is amazing in that if your testosterone levels are elevated, which this helps do, and it does it by preventing that um, uh, or inhibiting that conversion of testosterone to excess estrogen or excess DHT. The excess estrogen can lead to weight gain, fat gain, water retention, breast growth in men. The DHT levels can lead to acne and toughening of the skin, hair loss, and prostate issues. And, and you know, prostate cancer is a serious concern for men, any man over 40. So, you know, when I found a flower, this cactus flower, that actually inhibited both of those from, from happening at the same time by over 80%, I was like, wow, this totally eliminates the negative, almost totally eliminates the negative side effects uh, that people would get by boosted or elevated testosterone levels. And this was phenomenal. I combined it with other herbs that supported healthy um, hormone levels. And this product is great for both men and women because it's inhibiting those negative side effects. So, you know, finding these amazing plants, we're the first and only company in the world with DM33, this cactus flower. And, and we've been, it's been out for seven years and we're still the only one because it's our registered trademark material. So, you know, we're doing things that no other company in the world is doing. And we're the first to bring these things to market. And I really want people to see that we're doing something different, that we're focused on bringing the best in health in the plant kingdom and making that available to you if you want it. And these are plants that are doing things that are just not capable in our food supply. So I'm, I'm all about whole, whole plant foods. I'm not about supplementation for everything. If we can get these nutrients or these type of healing effects from plants, why not include these plants in our dietary regimen? And if they come in supplement form because that's easier, well, then so be it. But if they're not in our regular normal food supply, why would you not want to add this level of nutrition, omega-3 nutrition, B12 nutrition, a hormone optimization that is done in a holistic and, and healthy approach? You know, these are the things that can allow people to get quicker results in the gym, to get more better results um, by giving your body the proper nutrition it needs in its optimal states uh, without sending the body out of balance. This, this is a holistic approach instead of, you know, give people dramatic effects that are going to send their whole body out of whack. Oh, that, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really aligned with your vision. I really love what you're doing with your company. And if people want to find out more about you, what's the best way to learn about you on your website, Facebook, Instagram, where can they find you? Yeah, so on social media, both Instagram and Clean Machine, and uh, Facebook rather, is Clean Machine Fit. And uh, I'm always posting uh, nutritional information, the latest in research, um, dietary tips, workout tips, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I just love sharing that information also, and the plant based movement too, all the different uh, uh, people who are making big shifts and changes and stuff like that. And then you can find out more about our products at cleanmachineonline.com. Perfect, thank you so much. And uh, just really want to say thank you again for taking the time for the call today. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing with your company. Likewise, and uh, 
just uh, keep believing in the plants. They have, they're going to turn up even more um, amazing things when we continue to dig into the plant kingdom and find these special plants that uh, can deliver some pretty remarkable health benefits to us. So keep watch, keep a watch out. I'm always got my eyes open for the next most amazing plant out there. <laughs>